Good morning tubers. Now I was in the process of, I know this is really bad, but up here I was going to put all the cells up and try and recreate the battery and try and work backwards and work out what went wrong or what we could possibly do better. As much as this person's not probably going to like this, I genuinely think his problem was lack of maintenance and potentially the style of the build so the load on each of these batteries may have exceeded yeah maybe not the cells recommendation but practical limitations for you know um accumulated heat and stuff like that so even from back here you can see my you can see the problem i've i've taken the worst ones out and i've put them outside but can you see just here see if i can point with my finger there's a hot spot now I found in all of the cells, now all of these have been disconnected and they're only a handful of degrees hotter than the ambient temperature. So I'm not too concerned. It looks pretty bad on the, on the thermal imagery. But up here, we've got a couple of cells. So we've got a cell here that's hot. Now, when I say hot, it's only a couple of degrees hotter. And that one's fine. This one here appears to be a little warm down the bottom corner there. So we've got a cell that's hot there. There we go. You can see it better when you turn it up. And there's two more outside. Again, I'm going to reiterate that this is only a couple of degrees hotter. It's not dangerous at this stage. And they are not staying here for anything longer it takes me to do this video as quick as I can. Uh, so that's 40 degrees there. And that's 30 degrees. That was only, that was reading much less than that before. But, I'm I, again, I'm not really concerned about 40 degrees. 40 degrees is ambient temperature here during summer, so all of my cells would be that temperature. Um, but we, if we go from this view back to video and we just have a quick look now, this cell here, now the bus bar is removed. This one's the bus bars are removed. All the rest are just sit the, um, the fuses on one side. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Ah, no, screw it. I'll just put it in the way right out down there. So the voltages. For this one here, which is the cell below it, so the configuration is 40p, 40p. Um, so we've got 4.34 volts. Now that was a consistent across all the batteries when I, the first day that I had them, like, um, you know, after I got home, a couple of hours after I picked them up. Now, this one here. Now I only, I only got the thermal camera out this morning. I didn't have the foresight or or the time to actually grab the grab the thermal camera out and have a look. It was just questions on YouTube that prompted me to look even further. Um, so that's 3.822 volts. Now disregard that this is not a, a fluke or something, a fluke, but it's consistent across all cells. So 3.728 and 3.82. And then this one here is completely zero volts and that's the heater so you put your hand on that you can sort of feel the heat yeah you can feel the heat on that one but all the rest of them interesting you can't really feel the heat any different i think the one down there on the on the bench was um about four degrees difference and that's the one i put up on facebook or youtube a short time ago now i've like these ones here uh, new cells they haven't been cycled uh, this one here was in service these ones were in service some of them are yeah but they're but they're all fantastic now this is what we looked at the other day the build the build quality I can't fault the build quality of the cells and stuff I think they've put some thought and effort into it I don't think at this point in time the right choice and by the way that's got no heaters in it either neither is that um i don't think it was the right choice to do 40p but given the assumed age of these batteries um 
you know, you had you almost had to try it. And I don't know the load that they put under charge and discharge either. But they were closely balanced. So those long mons, or the BMS in general, was doing a huge amount of work to keep these cells in check. Um, and I think it, honestly, I think it did a really good job. Um, had, I mean, the Batrium stuff, if you had a looked at the Batrium, you could have seen which cells were balancing each day. And a shoe makes an assumption because if these two or these four, because this had a long one here, long one here, long one here, and long one here, so it had one, it had 1.7 amps of balancing current per 40 cells, which is awesome because considering in here I got 191 on one half amp balancer, but the 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 the, the BMS any BMS, I'm not just talking about Batrium, any BMS would have been struggling to keep this battery balanced that well. Now, if I had to make an assumption, now I've got the other cells, the other cells are still sitting in the backyard and I'll insert some final footage here. We'll go back out the back. Excuse my mess, I'm changing my workshop around. You gotta watch out for some puppy nuggets. That's why I'm looking down. Right here, and puppy nuggets, excellent. Oh, yuck. All right, tip-tie around it. Got the cells out here. Now, when these two cells were in, they, this is what they were like. We got negative on this side, positive on this side. We got the bus bars here. Um, now, what I reckon's happened here is we've got two heater cells. We've got a heater cell either here and here or sort of here and here or something. In some sort of arrangement, there were two cells that were heating beside each other and it just caused this thermal reaction that, and the accumulated heat would crank that heat up more and more and more. And to be honest, if you put your hand on it, I reckon it'd be super easy to feel that much heat with two heaters beside each other. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna call this, this, this issue not an 18650 issue, but a maintenance issue. Yes, the 18650 went south, but if you maintain your car, your wheel won't fall off, or your battery won't go flat, or your motor won't seize because you didn't put oil in it. So, I think that concludes this test. Um, with the one that's going flat in there that I just showed you, I'm gonna pull that one apart and do some resistance, resistance testing on the cell itself. I may even test each cell, I don't know yet. I, I really don't have the time to go deep with this. And all of a sudden, my entire day is taken up by talking to people and trying to trying to help them out. And at the end of the day, if you can't afford a thermal camera and you can't afford to do a cheap project right, you shouldn't be doing it. And I reckon it's time to bail from it. But anyway, I wonder if they're still, oh, yep, they're still hot. So they're still discharging. I don't know what temperature these are, but say two amp hours, by well, that's 80 amp hours. So it's gonna take 80 hours to get that dead flat with that give or take. But yeah, look at that rust. And a few other people. Oh, on, on that note, a couple of people have said, oh, you should have had a fire extinguisher. You should have had a fire extinguisher. Now that's all well and good. That would have put the fire out like within these plastic clips or, you know, that grass. But the fire extinguisher, how long do they last? Minutes, if you're lucky. And the thermal reaction is still going on. So as soon as you run out of propellant or whatever you use in the fire extinguisher, I'm no fire extinguisher expert, you run out of ability to do anything with your batteries. Um, so I put these, well, not I put these in water, they were put in water. Um, and I think that's actually the smartest thing they could have done because that killed the thermal reaction and stopped anything getting any worse. And that's evident by looking at these batteries. I mean, I mean, how much, that should be a lot worse than that. They're lucky, they're lucky at best. So anyway, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. Please hit the comments again, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.